Hello and welcome to this video which will be continuing my series all about Microsoft Exam PL600. Uh, this is the solution architect exam for those who are working with the Power Platform uh, and want to learn the skills and the know-how to be able to build and architect uh, the various different solutions uh, involving things such as Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agents, Power BI and Microsoft Dataverse. So in this video here, we're going to be taking a look at the ways in which we can bring our external data into the Power Platform. Now, this is arguably one of the, the main benefits that we've got when we're working with uh, uh, with this platform is that it's a fairly sort of data agnostic uh, uh, tool or provides very fairly data agnostic tools that we can leverage. So regardless of where our business data is, we can hopefully have got multiple uh, ways in which we can go down to bring it into the platform, either as part of maybe within Microsoft Dataverse, so stored, you know, row by row from our external system, or by just bringing it into the applications using some of the different options we've got available. So we're going to look at, uh, in this video today, four uh, different options that we can use and discuss the benefits and disadvantages of each one. So the first and most straightforward one from a setup and from a, a, a integration standpoint is that we can very simply just import data in via a sort of a flat file format. So as an example, if I go onto my list of apps down here and the Maker Portal, I want to select the Fundraiser app over here. This is just one of the sample applications that we can install into our environments when we're just doing some early experimentation with the platform. I want to navigate into one of my table uh, row types. In this case, this is my Fundraisers table. And what we'll see in any model-driven app at the top uh, corner up here will have an option for Import from Excel. When we expand this option up as well, then we can see there's additional options down here to Import from CSV or even to import from an XML file. So any table that we build out in Dataverse will support this functionality on here, and it becomes very quick and easy for us to just take data, export it out from maybe our external system, and then bring it into the into our model-driven applications. Now, the expectation with this is that we've got our appropriate sort of tables built out in Dataverse. We would need to ensure that we do the appropriate mapping, and of course, the, the, the rows that we import in will then exist in there so there may be a degree of duplication between our different systems but if we are uh, potentially moving from a spreadsheet type system into maybe the dataverse for the very first time this option may be the most appropriate from us uh, now if we wanted to do the same sort of thing maybe bring in data from external systems maybe have a bit more control over how the data is sort of uh, shaped before it lands in dataverse maybe we need to do some various different manipulation to it first then what we can also look to build out is these things called data flows. Now, what's really nifty about this is about data flows is that if uh, we already have some experience working with Power BI and specifically Power Query, then there's really nothing new that we need to learn on here. So if we just uh, start to create a sample data flow over here, uh, just put in a name like so, hit the create button. What we'll see here is a very familiar experience. Uh, so effectively, uh, data flows leverage Power Query underneath the hood. Uh, so we've got the same sort of functionality that we can leverage very quickly and easily. Um, we've got access to a wide variety of different connectors covering uh, different Microsoft and indeed non-Microsoft uh, type um, uh, systems and products. Everything from maybe you know SAP through to your know, OData endpoints or web APIs. And if I was just to select the blank query option just for demonstration purposes, what we then get in this experience over here is the ability to shape and transform our data. Uh, and if we've spent any amount of time working with the Power Query Editor in Power BI Desktop, this should all feel very familiar down here. We've got all the different options up here in terms of being able to select and shape our data. We can filter it. We can add in additional columns. We can transform our data. And really, if we anticipate there's going to be quite a bit of transformation that we need to do to our data, if we maybe need to look to bring in our data um, fairly regularly, so maybe we've got new records that are going into our system all the time, and we want to continually synchronize those up into Dataverse, uh, then again, a Power Query, a data flow will be our best bet because what we can do, as well as being able to load into existing tables, we can, if I go into the final options page, we can define refresh settings. So maybe, for example, every day, go into our external system, refresh the data, get me the latest rows from that so that they're then rep representative in Dataverse. So again, this is probably maybe our sort of a data import mode plus plus in terms of the capability, uh, you know, if our data is potentially in a bit of a mess, if we need to do some form of manipulation, this will be most prudent. But again, maybe the, the, the disadvantage with this route is that, again, um, we are storing data physically within Dataverse, um, which may or may not be prudent based on our scenarios because we may be then duplicating data as a consequence. 
because that covers data flows then. Now, the other option that we can turn to, and this will perhaps be most appropriate if we are looking at building out maybe power to make flows or maybe canvas apps, is our various different sort of uh, connections types. Um, so we've got access to, I believe it's well over 350 plus different um, uh, um, sort of connect connectors within the Power Platform that we can use. Um, and these cover a wide variety of different Microsoft and non-Microsoft systems. So we can see the entire list down here. We could probably just spend uh, all day just scrolling through here and finding different sort of Microsoft and non-Microsoft sort of products that we can consume. So we can very quickly and easily set up a connection using a connector. Uh, this will then be usable as part of our uh, Power Automate flows, cloud flows, and also our Canvas apps. Um, so we can look to bringing data into maybe a Canvas app from maybe a SQL Server, maybe from a DB2 database. Uh, we can maybe look to even set up a Power Automate flow that will connect to our external data source and maybe bring data into Dataverse. It's really entirely up to us. So this option here will be perhaps most appropriate for if we are uh, wanting to look at not necessarily using Dataverse, although we can do, but if we've maybe already got an existing SQL Server database, we've got an existing um, setup that we can, uh, you know, data model that we want to use, uh, then this will be most appropriate. We don't need to uh, completely re-engineer our solution, recreate it again in the Dataverse. We can just take what we've already got and use it within the Power Platform. So the final option we want to look at um, today is uh, virtual tables. And this is where we're maybe going down more the route of looking to build out our own bespoke solution. So what virtual tables effectively allow us to do is to connect up to any data in any external system and then render those as if they were actually tables in the Dataverse. So what we would actually potentially have if we navigate down into a table down there, let's assume that perhaps maybe we have a, a table maybe in our external SQL Server database to record maybe uh, uh, sort of uh, product line items. We could set this up as a table in Dataverse. Uh, we can configure all the appropriate columns, views, and forms for that data. And then that can then be pulled in from our SQL Server database as users request it uh, in the background. Um, and what's also quite nice now, which wasn't possible before, is that these virtual tables support uh, full CRUD capabilities. We can see we've got a sample down there that shows us how we can do that. Um, so we can very quickly and easily bring in data from any system, have it as a Dataverse sort of table. And the main benefit we've got with that is that they, this can then be used more easily with our model-driven apps. So virtual tables are, are potentially could be useful for certain situations. The main sort of drawback that we've got with them is that they do require a developer to get involved in some shape or format. Uh, because what, what, we'll, what we'll need to do in most cases is look to write our own custom data provider. Uh, that needs to be written using sort of C-sharp code, uh, in using similar patterns that we would use to build out a plugin. Uh, so obviously we would need to maintain that integration. Uh, we need to ensure there's lots of different considerations as well around it. Microsoft do provide a couple of example uh, providers. Um, so we've got a NO data version 4 uh, endpoint that we can use, uh, Cosmos DB. Uh, but in my experience, we uh, typically would need to go off and build our own custom data provider. Uh, particularly for the OData version 4 one, because that doesn't provide any support out of the box um, you know, for authentication patterns and things like that. There's also various different limitations uh, relating to our virtual tables that we can see down here. Uh, I'll include a link to this in the video so you can investigate further. But this will be more for our sort of maybe extreme scenarios where, okay, maybe okay, we have got data that we want to bring into the Power Platform. We want to use it as part of model-driven apps, but we don't want to necessarily have to load data in or worry about having to maintain data in two different sources. A virtual table will get around this. We can keep our data where we want it to uh, and then look to use it as if it was um, you know, part and parcel of an existing Dataverse environment. Just as I say, keep in mind, you will need a developer involved to, in order to build this out end-to-end. So hopefully this touches upon uh, four ways in which we can look to work with our external data within the Power Platform. Uh, so hopefully, as you can see, we've got a few different sort of options depending on what we, uh, uh, you know, on what approach you want to adopt. Um, uh, these options can be um, cater for people who maybe don't have, uh, who have limited sort of coding experience right through to sort of, um, you know, experienced developers. Um, so it's really just about finding the best solution that's going to be fit for our particular purposes. Uh, you know, sometimes bringing data into the Dataverse will make sense. Uh, sometimes just um, surfacing it out and 
and and using some of the connectors that we've got available to us instead to, to satisfy that will we'll meet our requirements so again as a solution architect we need to just review the requirements review what the business wants and then from there we can then make the most appropriate uh, recommendation based on uh, based on what the business needs uh, so that wraps up for this video so thank you for watching i hope you found uh, this uh, useful as part of your vision and learning for the exam uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the content and check out the other videos as well if you haven't already uh, we cover all sorts of topics on this uh, on this course relating to how we be a solution architect and also how and also most crucially the topics we need to understand if we are planning to sit the exam so thanks again and i'll see you again next time cheers